So you've always wanted to play cool courses like these from home? Well, I'm gonna show you how I went from this to this. Welcome. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna just be running through some of the, uh, the essential, what I believe essential items for a DIY home golf simulator build, and also some of the non-essential things that really have made all the difference to, to my setup. Um, some of them actually fall into the essential, non-essential category in my opinion. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll go through those in the next few minutes. I'm not gonna give you uh, prices on the individual items because I find it just a little bit irrelevant because you could be watching this in another country with different currency. Um, it just seems a little bit pointless. But what I will do is just provide a ballpark figure of how much it cost just for the essential part and then obviously for the essential and the extras, so realistically for the total build. So anyway, I hope you get a fair bit out of the next few minutes. Um, if you're looking to embark on this journey, um, of providing yourself with an amazing place to play indoor golf, do your practice, play some cool courses, um, then um, have a go. It's really worth the effort and the time and a little bit of heartache, to be honest. There's <laughs> a few challenges along the way, but definitely, definitely worth it. Um, just one other thing, um, the another key essential component that I won't really be covering off is the software. Um, but the one that I use is GS Pro currently. It's something I've just gone to and it is really, really amazing. There are some other good ones out there, but at the moment for me, the GS Pro is absolutely superb. So anyway, without further ado, we'll crack into it and um, we'll have a, give you a little walk around and a bit of a tour of, uh, of my setup here behind me. Essential item, number one, hitting screen, impact screen. I've got a, around about $200 one I bought off of uh, Amazon. This is actually the second one I've had. Um, right down here was where the last one split from all the consistent hitting in the same spot and I didn't really want to spend $1,200 on the screen if I didn't know this, this was actually going to work out. So hitting screen, um, what I've got up here behind this is an archery screen. Started actually with this but the image just wasn't really good enough for me so I decided to get the, uh, the impact screen in front of it but it gives me added protection at the back. As you can see this is fixed by We've got a plaster wall here. As you can see, the line that goes down is actually a, uh, one of the studs. Um, so strongly recommend that you connect into those. So we've got combination for the, for the archery screen. I've got U-shackle with cable ties. And then for the impact screen, I've actually got uh, these bungee cords, which give a little bit of elasticity to ensure that the screen just bounces back and you're not ripping great big holes in the screen. Because a lot of these holes that you can see are man-made because this screen only comes with four of these eyelets, one in each corner. So I've had to create these additional holes with a knife. And as, as you can see with the bungees, I've attached it through those. Into the ceiling, we've got chain going through some pipe clips. The pipe clips are actually connected via metal threaded screws into, into these, these metal runs that actually hold the plaster up. So they're not great fixings, but they just about do the job. The great thing with using the chain is that you have flexibility in where you put your holes for get your tensioning. So that's worked quite well. They haven't come out just yet, which is a result. Um, as you can see, I've got double bungees on that one because of the height, so on and so forth. So I've got about 10 or 11 fixings in there. And then we go over to this side. These ones go into the brickwork. As you can see, pipe clips again up there, bit of a mishmash. These are diner. Diner hooks going to the brickwork with the same bungees and down there. And then under here we have the we have the, the, the floor fixings which are diner bolted into concrete with the with the same bungees again. Now the reason for the extra tensioning is when you're hitting, sometimes you need to release a few to stop the bounce back and then if you want to watch a movie on here, you want to tension it up, it works really well. Next essential piece 
is a projector. I've got a BenQ HD projector. It's situated around about two meters from my screen and it sits just under 2.5 meters from the floor. Just wait for the motorbike to go past. <laughs> now the screen itself, I get a full image resolution there. Um, it's, it's just under three meters wide. And I'd say with the valance and everything, it's probably around about two meters you get of actual display image, which is really, really good. Okay, the next essential is your hitting mat. I've decided to spend a bit of money on my one. I got a 3D hitting mat, um, definitely worth it, definitely worth the investment. And I know there are better ones than these. This is 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters. I think they call it a commercial grade, um, but definitely has extra absorption um, for when you're hitting, especially if you're hitting, you know, hundreds of balls a day and stuff like that. You don't want a cheap mat, you need a decent one. The only difference that I've done with mine is I've just done a bolted a couple of fixings through where the T, the alternative T areas are. Um, so that it actually stops the mat from sliding around. Um, these are actually due to be ripped out soon, so I can spin my mat around because I'm just starting to see I've got a few feet marks appearing in here and this is getting a bit scuffed up over here where I'll continually keep hitting the ball from the same spot. So you want to be able to, that's why probably not a good idea to glue your mat down. You want to put it so that you can actually remove it and swap it around. Next essential bit of kit is your launch monitor. I have a Flightscope Mevo Plus. That was my one of choice and the reason for this being the one of choice for me is that I didn't particularly want a delay happening on my um, display when it came off the club face. I wanted it to be quite instantaneous and I also have the required amount of room that you need. So you need 2.4 meters from the device to the T and then you need 2.4 meters from the T to the screen is also recommended in the short throw in the short version of the setup. Okay, the next essential bit of kit is your device that you're going to run the software. So for me, I've got a uh, a Dell laptop. I don't know the full specs of it. Um, the only thing I know it's got a GeForce 1650 graphics card in this, uh, which definitely uh, suits what the software is required. Um, I've also got a an Ethernet cable there that runs from a um, modem which is over here and that runs all the way to the laptop so um, this works really well and actually made it made a lot of difference when I actually upgraded from, a, from an old work laptop so that's another essential bit of kit along with the modem obviously and your ethernet cable um, the other essential bit pretty, seems pretty standard and simple is your HDMI cable there that goes from there all the way down to the laptop. Okay, now you've had a look through the essential things that I see as essential. I'm gonna run you through some of the things that I've added as extras that are kind of added to the, the space um, from an aesthetic point of view and also from a practical point of view too. So anyway, we'll crack on and have a quick look at these ones. These are acoustic panels. Um, I've got them literally from floor to ceiling and then I've got them just above the hitting area as well. Um, aesthetically, they look pretty good, but they also do deaden the noise a little bit too. Because I think noise, for most of us that are doing this in a sort of suburban environment, is one of our greatest enemies because you can put your neighbors offside pretty damn quickly if you've got these balls smashing around with no noise protections. Anyway, these, these are made of some sort of foam. Um, I've just stapled these into plaster um, really easy, really quickly. Um, didn't spend a whole heap of time with this, um, purely for the fact that I didn't want to glue them on just in case this wasn't going to work and I was going to rip it all out. So The next thing, curtains. So again, the curtains give it that kind of movie room kind of feel, um, the feel that you sort of see in most of the high-end simulators. Um, got a curtain pole up there uh, that runs across and along, and I've got these kind of grey type of curtains with a bit of a shine to them. Um, but the other practical thing, thing here is that they hide a lot of the, uh, we've hired all the fixings actually, and they hide everything behind those and they're you know, easy to move around and, and do whatever you need to do. I've just got these old shitty bits of wood out of the garden that I've covered the bottoms up with. Had a bit of a flood there the other day from an issue next door, but that's all been resolved. 
And then at the very top, I have my good lady wife actually um, sew up a valance for us to hide the top half, which was then attached to some timber and then attached to the ceiling. Um, and that was the, the, the hiding of all of the fixings. So you can't see anything. Um, and that leads me nicely onto the bottom bit. So the bottom half as well is another area that obviously hot, hanging things from a bit of a challenge. So I just had my mate that did some chippy work, just knock us up a little bit of a frame that was just out of MDF and a bit of four by two, screwed it all together. And then I just added leftover of the, insula the uh, acoustic material and put it there. That hides very well all the bottom fixings that go into the floor. So that's that. The next non-essential item is fake grass. It's quite cool to have some fake grass in, in your space. It kind of makes you feel like you're out on a course to some degree. Um, I did find cutting this up to be a bit of a pain in the bum. Um, didn't do too bad a job, but this bit here looks a bit rough as guts. Looks like I've done it with an ax, but it's, uh, I kind of run out of, uh, I didn't want to buy a whole new roll just for a tiny little bit of grass. So these are all kind of cobbled together like Joseph's Technicolor dream coat. Um, as you can see, look like I've laid turfs, to be honest with you, and I ain't knitted together. So anyway, that's the, that's the grass. This falls under the non-essential slash essential category for me. Um, I want to maintain the temperatures. Um, it could get very, very hot here in the summertime, up to 40 odd degrees, and we get down to like the, the ones and twos. So having something to control the temperature um, is really, really useful. Um, that just hides the pipe work that goes to the outdoor unit outside, um, but really, really handy. This section here also falls into the essential, non-essential category. But if you want to play all the clubs in your bag and you only have a two and a half meter ceiling height, this is absolutely essential. I had the ceiling raised. It's actually been filled up with, uh, with MDF because this was done after the fact, after I got everything in place. And then I decided to go, I wanted the ceiling raised and the thought of having a plaster ceiling put in with all the rubbing down and all the dust and everything, I just couldn't face that. So I was done with MDF, it's come up really well. Um, I've just got a, a little LED light there, which again is, it is a non-essential item, but man, does it make a difference when you turn it on and everything's a bit dark. It gives you all the different colours of the rainbow in the room and it just changes what the whole room looks like. So yeah, the, the, the ceiling is really, really, uh, it, it's, you don't need it. You can, if you want to use, you know, like up to, you know, whatever space you've got, five irons, four irons, you can use those. But I wanted to use a driver. I wanted my friends to be able to use a driver and this was lifted up. Um, the ceiling or the roof above this is tin. So the trusses are a lot further apart. So it wasn't such a big job. Storage. This always comes in handy. Ends up getting filled up with a load of crap and junk, but it comes in very handy. So I've got a couple of little storage things there. I've got like a, a unit there that holds the, uh, the PC, the very important PlayStation, which the screen comes in useful for for TK, uh, 2K21 Golf. I've got another monitor that sits there as well, which um, I have Golf playing through Chromecast. Um, that little tripod thing down there is X-Putt which is a putting um, simulator. I will go through that on another video another time, but that sits there and I just putt into that. And actually that screen there is the screen that I use for the putt out, or the X-putt, I should say. And there's a few piece of junk trophies down there from the years gone by. There's an old Bluetooth speaker there that used to be a, um, an aiming point also uh, for our speakers, but got cleaned up with a top drive and it hasn't worked properly since, unfortunately. Um, this also down here comes in handy. This was used for something else, but um, th this fan comes in really handy when you're you know, hitting a lot of balls. You can have the fan directly blowing on you um, and keeps you nice and cool. I see these a lot on, um, on other simulators where they've got like this highlighted hitting area. Can't really see it, it's quite light today, but this highlighted hitting area when it's a bit dark. I've just used a Milwaukee battery drill, um, oh sorry, battery drill, battery torch. And as you can see, it's got a, an adjustable thing on it here. I decided to uh, stick in a putt out putting mat, which was gonna give me a bit of practice there, but I also decided to buy the X putt putting simulator. There's also a training aid there. 
always really handy if you get a little bit, you know, you want to have a bit of a change of scenery and you want to have a bit of putting practice as well. There's not much point being able to hit the ball beautifully on the simulator and not be able to putt when you get on a course. Um, the other things that I've had done are the carpet tiles. I decided to just go and buy a set of tiles that were literally next to nothing. They pretty much given them away at the carpet shop, um, stuck them down, um, and that's made a nice addition there. So you kind of walk from the carpet tiles onto the mat and then you're hitting onto the, onto the screen over there. Right behind me, you'll see there's a, a roller garage door just here. And just underneath it, we've got some doors here. These were installed uh, right at the end of my project when I realized that everything was as I wanted it to be. But the thing was, that was really kind of frustrating me that I couldn't actually keep the, uh, I couldn't keep the temperature controlled because once that door behind me um, was actually down in the down position, the gap at the very top here um, was huge. So obviously all the, um, all the, uh, the, the elements and, and keeping the, the, the space at the right temperature was impossible. And um, the other thing that was an issue was, the, uh, was keeping the noise down. Um, as I said earlier, the noise is one of our greatest enemies, I think, in the home golf simulator space. So once I had this, um, these doors and the paneling installed um, and made it into a, a sort of a secure space as well, the noise and the temperature were not an issue for me anymore. That was an, uh, a fantastic addition to the space for me. So if you can do that as well, that just sits on the outside of the garage door. And the other really cool thing as well is that as you can see behind me, um, when the sun actually moves into space there, um, it shines straight in and trying to see the screen during the day is actually a bit of a challenge. So what I'm able to do is I'm actually able to use the remote and drop the garage door down. So it's literally like playing at night time when I've got the perfect resolution on the screen. So that enables me to do that by leaving that in. How much did this all cost, you ask? Well, the essentials, the things that I covered off in that section there, around about the six and a half to seven thousand dollar mark in regards to Australian currency. Um, I think the extras and the ceiling lift, uh, the outside panelling with the doors, uh, came to just around about eleven thousand dollars all up. So I, I've got this purpose built. It feels like a purpose built space for just around about eleven thousand dollars, but it can definitely be done without the extras for around about the six and a half to seven thousand k mark. So um, I hope that what you've seen will inspire you to maybe have a bash if you've been thinking about it. Um, it's definitely not as expensive as you think. You just need to shop around and 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 uh, and see if you can get the best deal. And this is certainly not a package, uh, package sort of project. This was all custom, this was all DIY. Um, and as you can see, that the result's not too bad. It's definitely playable. I'm really happy with it. So look, anyway, best of luck. I hope it all works out for you if you decide to go down this path. If you've got any questions or there's anything you need a bit of further information on, um, please send us a message. I'm gonna post this on, on the YouTube channel. If you wanna send us a message, I'll endeavor to answer it. Um, so yeah, good luck with all that. I shall leave links in the description for where I got uh, my products and everything else like that. So anyway, best of luck. I hope it all goes well.